Um, is this a taster session? Okay. It is, but I thought we'd still have some questions for you to be doing whilst we're waiting for everybody. Uh, also, could I do uh, blue, please? Oh, I think we might let you do blue. Oh, Isabella, gorgeous. What's happened to all the little ones? Are they still lovely? Um, yes, we just sold a lot of rabbits. Oh, how many have you got left? Just your big rabbit or? Oh, no, we have uh, 16. Oh. Also, uh, Miss, I believe the um, the starters, the starter is not in the uh, notebook. Yeah, I've not put them in your notebook today because um, other people might be joining our lesson and they won't have it in the starter. So I thought we'd just do it all from the board today. So, yes, you'll be just be working on pen and paper today. Nothing in your books. I'm sure you can, Stephanus, try green. Good morning, Devanshi.
Morning, Daniel. Morning. We're getting there. No uh, rush. There's nothing in your notebook today, Daniel, because it's a GCSE, IGCSE taster lesson. Morning, Zara. Okay. Morning, Chun. Morning, Ava. Morning, Ahmed. Morning, Namita. Morning, Olivia. Morning, Sayan. Morning, Juliana. Morning. Okay, my usual group, there's nothing in your notebook today. We're working from the board totally because not everybody can have a notebook. Okay, I'm going to give you, right, so those of you that are, have just joined, good morning, I'm Mrs Pye. Normally, we have four or five questions as a starter whilst everybody's trying to join the lesson. And then you get to tell me the answers. Isabella has already volunteered for the, oh, I can't remember, Isabella, which colour would you wanted? Oh. Um, it was blue. Oh, Isabella wanted to have a go at giving me the answer to the blue one. And Stephanus wants to have a go at giving me the answer to the green one. If any of you want to volunteer for one of the other colours, then please do. Cyan, you want to have a go at purple? Thank you. By Devanshi. Okay, one more minute, then we'll do some answers to these. Okay, let's do some answers. So, Isabella, you want to have a go at the first one? Uh, yep. Yeah. So, um, I found that like the A part was going up by four and the B part was going up by one. So, 17 
a minus 4b. Yeah, the only thing I would say is the b part is the go up by one, it's going down by one. You're taking one off. So from minus b, take away another one, you get minus 2. Take away another one, you get minus 3. So you gave me the right answer, but there was just a little flaw in your description of why. Well done. Yeah, they're tricky when they're algebra sequences. Uh, Cyan, find the volume of a cylinder with diameter 8 and height 20. So we've done this recently. So, so what I did was um, pi r squared times height, which is the volume. And to do that, I did 8 uh, divided by 2 to get the radius, which is 4. Then I did 4 squared, which is um, 16. Then I times it by pi. And then I... Um, then times that by its height, which is uh, 20 centimetres, which gave me 1,005 centimetres cube when I rounded it. Well done. Yes, well remembered for the formula. Um, volume of a cylinder is the area of a circle multiplied by the height. And remember, pi r squared sounds like area to me. Cyan so even remembered to change the 8 to a 4, use the radius. So if you left it in terms of pi, I think you'd get 320 pi. But then I'll just check your decimal, Cyan. 320 pi. Yep, I got 1,005 as well. Cubic centimetres, well done. Stephanus, you want to have a go at the um, fraction one for me? I was a bit unsure on this, but I just, like, I turned them both to improper fractions. So I did Super. 6 over 5 divided by um, 37 over 10. Perfect. Uh, and then I times the five, like six over five by two. Ah, I know what you've done. Yeah. Do you not? Re do, does anybody remember how you divide fractions? What do you do when you want to divide? Fra it's tricky, Stephanus. This is the hardest bit of fraction work. Go on, Olivia. What do you do? Um. Don't you like? So, for example, for this equation. You put the 10 over the 37. And what do we do instead of dividing? Times. You do. Well done, Olivia. Well remembered. We haven't done that for a while. OK, Stefana, so we never really divide fractions. We uh, multiply by, what's that called? Instead of 37 over 10, we do 10 over 37. What's the word that we use that describes the relationship between this number here and this number here? Can anybody remember the word? Go on, Daniel. Keep it, change it, flip it. Keep it, change it, flip it. I agree. But what do we use to describe 10 over 37? If we started with 37 over 10 and we've ended up with 10 over 37, I have definitely, definitely told you the word. Oh. Can anybody remember the word? Oh, I'm disappointed, disappointed. It's not, a, it's not a word we use very often. It's called the reciprocal. So instead, that's it. Thank you, Cyan. Yeah, instead of dividing, you multiply by the reciprocal. And that's the flip, flip bit that I think Daniel's on about. Is that right, Daniel? Is that the flip? Because you flip that up the other way. Is that right? Yeah. So Daniel's saying you keep the six over five. You change the divide for a times and you flip the fraction up the other way. So, Stephanus, what did you think? 60 over 185. Yeah, 6 times 10 is 60. 5 times 37 is 185. That will simplify because they'll both divide by 5. So, I think you'll get 12 over 37 maybe with the answer for that one. Nobody volunteered for the red one. We will come back to the red one because that's what we're going to do a bit of today. OK, right. First of all, I'm going to tell you a bit about the GCSE. So the IGCSE that we do is the Cambridge International GCSE. And there are two of them, the 0580 and the 0980. And it depends where you do them. If you're doing them in the UK, so in the United Kingdom, you will do 0980 and you will get grade one to nine. 
If you're doing them elsewhere in the world, I think you'll do 0580 and that will give you a letter A star to G. But the content and the exams are similar in how they are put together. So that's why we can teach you all in the same class. It just depends where you're being entered for the exam. OK, so. I've got it all here on words of what you have, so that tells you what the GCSE is trying to achieve. So it's trying to make you good mathematical thinkers. And I keep talking to you about being good mathemat mathematical thinkers and explaining your maths really well. OK, things that are important to know is let me find my pen. Sorry. So things that you need to know that are important. There's a lot of solving problems and real ma real life maths. And we keep talking about doing lots of problem solving. It's not our favorite, but we try to do it in every lesson that we do. And it's tiered. So what that means is you might not do the same exam as everybody else. There is what's called a, a core and an extended. So the core gets you some grades. And if you want to get the higher grade, you do the extended. And we don't need to decide that right until the end of the course when you're entering for your exam. So let me show you. Those are the topics that we do. I don't think there's um, you'll know number work. We've done some algebra and graphs. Coordinate geometries when you're looking at things on um, straight line graphs. So my group, we've just started drawing some straight line graphs. So it's all the work to do with that. Geometry is all your shape work. So your area, your volume, your measures, all that comes in these two here. Trigonometry is a new one. So that's a topic you won't have come across before. Transformations we've done, reflections, rotations, enlargements, translations, that's the other one. Vectors, you'll have come across the word a vector. We've used those when we do sliding shapes. And then probability, we've done a lot of work on probability. And then the other topic we do is statistics, which is all your graphs and your averages and your stem and leaf diagrams and your pie charts. So there's not a lot of stuff that looks like it's new, but all the topics that you've done so far, we go over and then make it a little bit harder. So, for example, in your algebra, you've done linear equations, you've done simultaneous equations. We then have to do harder equations. We have to do quadratic equations. We have to do harder simultaneous equations. So we use everything that you've done before and we just build on it and make it a little bit harder. OK, so that's the content of the exam. OK, so this is how you're assessed in it. So you take two exam papers. OK, there the core gets you grades C to G. OK, so you will take paper one and paper three. One of them is non-calculator and one of them is with a calculator. So the assessments that you've been doing at the moment are one with a calculator and one without a calculator. So that's why. So everything we do, there are certain topics that will only be on the calculator paper. But most topics we will teach you to do with and without a calculator. Those of you um, that don't take the core paper, you will take the extended papers. So that's papers two and four. And that can get you grades A star to E. OK. Now, again, one with a calculator, one without a calculator. You will need a scientific calculator, not those little ones that just do add, subtract, multiply and divide. You will need a scientific calculator. Um, I'll show you the sort in a minute. OK, so this is what the exam. So your exam papers, if you are doing the core, if you are doing the core papers, which again, we do not decide until you're doing your exam entry, it's 50 percent allocated to each paper so they are equal weighting so you have to be equally as good non-calculator as you are with a calculator okay on the core they're each out of 80 marks and the second one's with a calculator for extended paper each paper's worth 50 percent but each paper's out of 100 marks notice the extended paper is longer it's two hours for each paper as opposed to an hour and a half. 
okay so it all comes down to two exam papers and I said you need a scientific calculator one like that is the sort you need one with all these buttons on here because you will learn to use all these buttons so rather than the ones that just have plus subtract multiply and divide on okay so you'll need one that has all these on you'll need one with like a fraction button would be helpful brackets is helpful um you'll learn to use all not that one not that one you'll learn to use all these buttons here you need ones with square roots on squared it doesn't have to be these these were just two pictures that i found on the internet but you will need a scientific calculator and the idea is that you have that calculator at the start of the course so that we can teach you how to use it so that when you come to take it into your um, calculator paper you know exactly how your calculator works without any problems whatsoever if you want to know more about the course there is um, an interactive learner guide and that interactive learner guide if you just google each uh, cambridge interactive learner guide it gives you now my link might work let me just see if my link's going to work no i put a link in and now i won't i can't get it to work right let me stop sharing and i'll open the link and show you no. Right, bear with me. I'll click, let me get my learner guide open and then I will show you how it works. Okay, right, so let me just share my page with you and I'll show you the learner guide and then that's something you, you can go and look at yourselves. Learner guide, there we go. So if there's more you want to know about the course, so in the learner guide, it will tell you about um, the course itself. It gives you an overview of what's covered in the maths. It takes you through some of the content in more detail than I did. It tells you what the papers are like. So you can see here that Paper one has short answers. Paper three has longer answers. And if we go down here, it gives you some examples of what the questions look like. So you can have a look at what the papers might look like. And if we go even further down, it shows you um, ideal answers for the questions and the sort of words you need to understand. Okay, so it'll give you an insight into the course and then finally there is if i can find it now there is a bit that shows you let me scroll down quicker there's like a red amber green there we go that's what i'm looking for so that tells you the content and actually if you went through this now at the start of the course there would be a lot of things on there so looking on this first page you know what integers are, you know what prime numbers are, you know what product of primes are, you know the square numbers and the cube numbers, common factors, highest common factors. So you'd be able to go through this and there'll be a lot of it that you already know. And then you'll see the bits that we're going to, there's that word look right at the bottom of the page, reciprocal, we've just talked about that. Okay, so there's a lot of things that you'll see you know already, but then you'll see the bits that we're going to build on. Okay. So if you just Google Cambridge IGCSE Maths Learner Guide, you can have access to that and have a look through. OK, right. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. Right, let's do some maths because that's what we want to do. OK, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some set notation. Now, I've not done any of this with my group. You will have come across it in some of the starter questions. OK, so generally my lessons always start. My, they start with a starter. We do five, ten minutes on that. People give me answers. Love you to contribute. Then I'll teach you to do a new 
idea of what we're doing, practice questions, and then we go through the answers and we try to finish off at IGCSE, we try to finish off with an exam question and what it would look like in an exam. Okay, so here's your question. Joe is writing down the set, and a set is just a combination of things put together, of all the mathematical shapes he can think of. He calls his set S. What shapes could he include in set S? So you can see he has got these ideas in his head of different shapes. If I wanted to split those shapes up into different groups within there, what categories could I use? Can anybody give me some suggestions of what categories I could use within there? You can either type it in the chat or pop your hand up and I'll ask you. So go on, Daniel. 2D and 3D shapes? You could split them up into 2D and 3D shapes. Perfect, yeah, because I can see some three-dimensional shapes in there. I can see some two-dimensional shapes in there. Are there any other categories we could use within the two-dimensional or within the three-dimensional? So think of all the different things that could be within each of them. So we've used some of these words in our lessons when we've um, when we've done classifying shapes. We talk about prisms. Thank you. Yeah, prisms, quadrilaterals. Yeah, we'd have those. Number of sides. Well done, Stephanus. You could go by number of sides and split all the shapes up that way. Okay. So a set is is just a group of objects put together because they have the same um, characteristic. OK, doesn't have to be numbers. It could be words, could be colours, could be anything. So this first question, we're, we're going to be looking at um, shapes. So Joe decides to split his set into a number of smaller sets. He labels them like this. So T is the set of 3D shapes. Q is the set of quadrilaterals. And P is the set of shapes that start with the letter P. Why not? Why not? So your next question then is, what shapes can you think of that would go into each set? So feel free. I will write when I find my pen. OK, so set T. Can anybody think of any shapes that could go within set T? Right. Go on, Daniel. Pentagon. That's not 3D. T is 3D. Sorry. Sphere. Oh, like it, Keena. Thank you. Sphere. Any others that I could put in set T? Cube. Cuboid. Cuboid would go in there. Can you think of any other triangular prism? Yeah. What's the one that was in the starter? Oh, I've just gone to write it. I'm supposed to be writing the word prism. Yeah, see at the cylinder pyramid. Yeah, there's loads that could go in there. So triangular prism. I'm sorry, I'm slow writing now. Cylinder. And we've got pyramid. Right, I'm going to stop there. There are loads more that could go in there. Right, let's have a look. What about set Q, quadrilaterals? Notice how I'm writing them in these curly brackets. We use curly brackets for um, set notation. The meter, can you come up with a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape? Any four-sided? Um, a square. A square Can would you... go in there, perfect. A kite. That's what Keena's put in there. Rectangle, parallelogram, yeah. Trapezium. Trapezium. Oh, thanks, Daniel. I was trying to think which ones we missed out. And I can see Cyan's put rhombus in there as well. I think I think we've got loads of, right okay so those are the now that's with the remore that we could come up with 
Okay, so can you see, are there any, right, let's do P. Can we come up with any that begin with the letter P? I think we've had so. Ah, oh, right. So your pentagon could go in there, Daniel. That's what you said at the start, wasn't it? Isabella's got that as well. Any other? Uh, I can see parallelogram we've used. We could put that in there. Pyramid. Yeah, I've got pyramid. Go on, Daniel. Prism. Prism. I'm going to give you my favourite word now. I'm not sure I can spell it. Parallel, not parallelogram, parallelopiped. That's, imagine, imagine like a 3D grid made up of parallelograms. That's a parallelopiped. That's how I remember it. Anyway, parallelopiped. So it's like a, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, paraboloid. Paraboloid. That's a new one. On, pa, pa, uh, par, I can't even spell it. Paraboloid. Okay. Right, there we go. Okay, can you see that there are some shapes that overlap that are in more than one? So, for example, if we look at parallelogram, I can see parallelogram there. Um, if we look at, uh, blah, blah, blah. what have we got up here? Prism, pyramid, pyramid, prism. So you are going to have some shapes that overlap in more than one set. And the word we use to describe that is the intersection. And we use this symbol to illustrate the intersection. So we could say um, Q intersect with P gives me a parallelogram. That was it. That would be in the intersect parallelogram. So can you see that that would be in the intersection of P and Q because it appears in both sets? Yeah, we could have an intersection of P and T. And in that we've got prism and we've got pyramid. What if I asked you, though, for T? intersect with Q. What could you say about that set? Remembering T is the set of 3D shapes and Q is the set of quadrilaterals. Can anybody work out what we can say about T intersect with Q? So in other words, I'm asking you, are there any shapes that appear in set T and set Q? Go on, have a go. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. Wrong answers are good answers because we learn from them. Zara, what do you think? You haven't spoken to me today. Good morning, Zara. What do you think about 3D shapes and quadrilaterals? What What are you thinking? Are there any that overlap in that group? Um, my knowledge of shapes are quite limited, so I'm not really sure for this. But can you think of any? Look at the shapes. Sphere, cube, cuboid, square, quite parallelogram. Cube? Is cube is a cube a quadrilateral? Think if I draw you a cube. No. It's a 3D no. shape, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I can't think of any, can you? No. No, not at all. So we say it's, it's the empty set. There's nothing in there. Can anybody tell me why? Why do I know there isn't going to be a shape that goes in here and here? Can anybody think of why there will never be a shape that goes in there and there? What's the big difference between set T and set Q? Oh, have I stumped you? Oh, well, 
Ah, oh, Stephanus, well done. Yes, I am, well done. These, your quadrilaterals are two-dimensional shapes. They're flat. You can draw them on a piece of paper flat. Yeah, they only have two dimensions. They have a length and they have a width. Three-dimensional shapes, have a length, a width and a height. So there's no overlap, well done, Kina, between your two-dimensional shapes and your three-dimensional shapes. So your intersection is the empty set. It doesn't exist. Okay? So we've looked at a bit of set notation and how we write it. Notice how I write them with those curly brackets. So when you describe in a set and you're putting things in a set, you have to use these types of brackets. They look like a face. I always used to think they look like a face when you draw them. Okay. So that's the intersection that we've talked about. Right. We're going to come up with another word now. Doop, 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 doop. We've done that. The complement of a set. OK, and the thing about set notation, there's just lots of new words that you have to learn. So the complement of a set. Are the shapes that are not in that set are shapes that are not in that set. OK, so if T, if I can remember, T. Was my set of 3D shapes, I can't write. Let me just rub that on there. If T is my set of 3D shapes, anything that's not in that set, I write with a little dash. So that's anything that's not 3D. So, for example, a circle would be there, a triangle would be there, okay? So, that little dash means anything that is not in the set, okay? So, we've got set notation with our brackets, we've got the intersection, which is the overlap, and we've got the complement, which is the dash. OK, so I want you to think about these. We're only going to use the numbers 1 to 30. I would like for you to write down for me, or to if you've not got pen and paper there, think about them and what you'd put in there. E is all the even numbers, but only using the numbers 1 to 30. P are my prime numbers, so what's going to go in that set? S are my square numbers, so these are all words you know, and C is my cube number. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about what goes in each set. OK. OK, let's get some of these sets going then. So um, let me see who can anybody want to volunteer, first of all, to give me the, the set of even numbers from one to 30. Go on, Stephanus, what would you put in there? So two, four, six, eight, 10, um, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Um, 26, 28, and 30. Thank you. So that's my set of even numbers. Right, so we've done that one. Anybody want to give me my set of prime numbers? Oh, go on, Isabella. Um, so the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 
7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and um, 29. Yeah, I agree with you. Perfect, well done. Anybody want to volunteer for the square numbers? No, no volunteers for the square numbers. Or the cube numbers? If I tell you that you get a square number by multiplying a number by itself. Go on, Cyan, give me the square numbers. Uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. 25, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 36, but that's outside our, our set. And cube numbers then. Go on, Isabella. Um, is it 1, 8, and 27? 1, 8, yeah. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, yeah. So those are what our set look like. I'm just going to throw another word at you here. The original set of numbers that you are allowed to use is called the universal set. So you're generally given a set to start with and then you pick out the individual ones within them. OK, so you can see from there you have got some some numbers that appear in more than one group. Are there any numbers that don't appear anywhere? Are there any numbers that aren't in any of those sets at all? Can anybody find a number that's not in any set at all? Or have we got them all covered there? I don't know whether I can. 15. 15's not there. I found one. 15 doesn't appear anywhere. OK, right. Now we're going to use those sets in the next set of questions. Yes, we've got them all there. OK, so my last bit of information. The union of two sets is when you join two sets together to make a larger set. So let me give you an example of what I mean. So if you took the square numbers and the cube numbers, which you've just done, if we did the union of them, we just join the two sets together. But notice that we don't write the number one twice. We only write it once. So you've now got your set notation, you've got your complement, you've got your intersection. So can anybody tell me what would be the intersection of the square and the cube numbers? So that's where they overlap. So in other words, what numbers appear in both? That would be the number one. And you've now got your union when you join them together. OK, so intersect, overlap, union, join together. Right. Time for you to do some work. I'll write them. Up. So these are your sets. I'd like you to write down the numbers that you think are, are in any of those groups. It gets harder as you go through. So you means union or join together. Intersect means overlap. And the dash means the complement, not in that set. OK, I'm going to give you what time are we on. Right, so we've probably got about how long do you need? Probably 10 minutes or a minute per question.
If you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat or if there's something you're not sure about. How are we getting on? Some are easier than I. I think the easy ones are the overlap ones. I think those ones are dead easy to do. I think the complement ones are the harder ones to do. OK, two minutes and then we'll take answers to the ones that you've done. OK, let's work through some answers. So the first one. Are there any numbers that overlap the even numbers and the prime numbers? I'm going to sneeze. Hold on a minute. Right, I'm back. Namita, did you find any numbers that are in E and P? No, wait, oh God. Um, no, I don't think so. 
So you're looking along this row and along this row to see if there are any numbers that are in both. Oh, sorry. Um, there's two. There's um, uh, God. Uh, sorry, don't mind me. Uh, there's two. Two is two? obviously one. Uh, yeah. I think that's the only one. Yeah. Two oh, is because yeah. two is the only even prime number, isn't it? Because every other prime number can be divided by two anyway, so it can't be a prime number. So yeah, I put you on the spot a bit there, but it is. There's only the number two. There's only the number two. Okay. Does anybody? Daniel, did you have a go at the complement of P? So numbers that aren't in P. We had a go, but we have not wrote them down. Yeah, we've done it, but we haven't written it down. So it's quite a big list, not, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Not in P. So we've got three. One. one. Yeah. Three. Three is there is three's in P, there. so Sorry. we can't have that one. Did so you go up through the numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went up through the numbers. Is it is it four next? And then seven. Yeah, I think that's what I'd have to do. I'd have to go up through the numbers and yeah. And write them all. It's quite a big list, actually. There's it is, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, ten. <gasps> twenty of them, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Yeah, seven, one, two, six, six, seven, eight. No. I tell you what, Daniel, I'll give you I'll give you this one whilst I'm writing all the numbers out. You can just check that one. So that's joining the two to. Oh, that's equal. No, I'm not going to give you that one either, Daniel. Too much writing. I'll give you a. I'll give you a shorter writing one. Do number four whilst I'm just writing this out. Okay. Eight, nine, ten, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. There we go. I got to the end of it eventually. Number three, S union P means join these two groups together, but don't write any overlap. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, twenty-five, and I can just squeeze twenty-nine in there. Okay, right, Daniel, overlap between the prime numbers and the square numbers. Are there any overlaps between this one and this one? Not that I can see, no. No, it's, can anybody explain why? How can a number, why is there no numbers that are prime numbers and square numbers? Can anybody explain why? Think about what the definition of a prime number is and think about what the definition of a square number is. Oh, well done, Cyan. Yes. If it's a square number, it's automatically got a square root number, hasn't it? So if you think about it, 25 is a square number, so it can't be a prime number because 5 times 5 um. 5 times 5 makes 25, but you know a prime number can only be, only has two factors, one in itself. So by definition, that is always going to be the empty set because you can't have any that are in both. OK, let's do the overlap ones and we'll come back to the complement ones. What about uh, number six? Does anyone want to give me an answer to number six? Where does E overlap with s so that means you're looking for even square numbers because it's got to be in both sets so i'm looking for even square numbers cyan um would it be 4 and 16 
I think it is four and 16. Four's in the square numbers, 16's in the square, four's even, four's even. So you're looking for square numbers that also are even. So that one's okay. Let's jump to the last one, number eight. I think it's better doing it this way, then we'll go back to the complement ones. So number eight, S overlap. So we're looking for square and cube. So are there any square numbers that are also cube numbers that are less than, th they're in that set one to 30? Isabella? One. Number one. Yeah, I think the next one up is 64, but that's not in our group of one to 30. Um, 64 is a square number and a cube number. I don't know what the next one is. Um, so, right, let's go back to the complement. The complement questions. So this one, you need to do E union C first. Let me just check the time. Right, we've got time to do one question. Um, and then I'm going to show you the exam questions. So for this one, you need to think about joining E and C. So you need to join. My pen stopped working. You need to join this group with this group and then do all the numbers that you don't write down. So, for example, one, two, three would be there because it's not in there. Four, five's not in there, so I'll have that one. Six, seven's not in there, so I'll have that one. Eight's there. Nine's not there. 10's there, 11's not in them, 12's there, 13's not in them, 14's there, 15's not in them, 16's there, but 17's not, 18's there, but 19's not, 20's there, but 21's not, 22's there, but 23's not, 24's there, but 25 isn't, 26 is there, 27 is there, 28 is there, 29 and 30 is not. So can you see you pick all the ones that aren't in the joining up of those groups? OK, so let me show you what an exam question looks like. I've got two exam questions here. Exactly. Now, this symbol here, this symbol here just means the universal set. OK, so you're starting with the numbers 103, 104, 105, 109, 110, 112 and 114. You can only use those numbers. A is the set of the even numbers and B is the set 103, 112, 114. And all it asks you to write down is the numbers of A union B and the numbers that aren't in A, and you would get one mark for each answer. So if I was doing this question, I would write down set A. So that would be 104, 110, 112, and 114. And I would write down my set B, which is 103, 112, and 114. And then my answer for the first part would be just joining those together. So I could write set A first. And then I'm going to join in set B. I'm not going to write those again because that would mean repeating myself. That's one mark. And then my complement of A, I can't have 104, I can't have 110. I'd be left with 103, 105, 109. And that would be one mark. And that would be in core and extended. So that's not a difficult. OK. OK, just before we go, have a go at the second question. See if you could write down for me which numbers are in A intersect B and which numbers are in A, a union B. And what I would say to you is when you're doing your GCSE, one mark 
should take you one minute to do. And that's what we tend to use in our assessments when we do our assessment. So those two mark questions should take you two minutes to do. So if it's taking you five minutes, you're doing something that's too tricky. If any of you have got any questions about the IGCSE, then please ask them now. You will get homework. I'll just tell you whilst you're working. You'll get homework assignments once a week like you do now. You will have your assessments every term like you do now. So in that sense, nothing changes. One more minute, we'll check answers. Okay, right, let's check answers. I've lost my pen. Right, I've got my pen. Okay, so A intersect B are the numbers that are in both sets. So please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think two is in both sets. I can see that there and there. Three is in both sets. I can see that there and there. And 10 is in both sets. I can see that there and there. I haven't missed any out, have I? Right, no, I think I've got that right. And then for the last one, A union B, one, two, three, eight. I don't have to write them in order. It doesn't tell me I have to. I've done two and three already. And then I've got six, five, four. Oh, I've done 10 as well. Nearly wrote 10 twice. Okay. And that would get you two marks. Okay, right, I'm going to stop sharing. Have any of you got any questions that you want to ask me before we go? Are we happy? No? Well, all okay? It's nice to see you smiling, Amida. OK, right. Go and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you for joining me and I will see my group tomorrow, back to normal tomorrow. OK, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye. And don't forget, you've got homework. Thank you, as well. bye. bye. Thank you. Bye.